Hello everybody and welcome to another one of our leadership training videos. Now in these leadership training videos, what I do is I just take you for a few minutes through some ideas and thoughts that will help you in your own journey, wherever you are in that journey, whether it's the beginning, or you're very experienced, or you're moving into it, or you want to learn something about other skills that can help you in your leadership growth. Now once again, you don't necessarily have to be a leader already. It could simply be that you're interested in knowing more about being a leader. It could be you run your own business, or maybe you're just head of a family or a part of the family and you want to know how to be more skilled and more able to lead. So in these leadership training videos, what I do is I share one or two insights to help you drill down and focus into specific areas that can help you to become a more effective leader, to learn what the leadership traits are, what the skills are, what the abilities are that you need, and more importantly, how you can grow as a leader or into leadership as the case may be. Now, my name is Chris Igwe. I have over 35 years experience leading training and developing teams across Europe, Middle East and Africa, and primarily in the five major European markets where I've lived or worked. So welcome to this. If you want to uh, share, comment or like, then please feel free to do so. Always great to have uh, comments, feedback, insights from your own side. So let's get into it. The topic we're going to talk about today is Something that I really encourage you as a leader and leaders in general to do is to know your strengths and weaknesses. Know your strengths and weaknesses. Now, on the one hand, there are those who say in broader circles, we don't focus on or comment about weaknesses. They are things that we should work on as opposed to weaknesses. But I'm very, being very specific here. You do need to know what your strengths are but you also need to know your weaknesses, you as a leader. This is not about other people, this is about you. We all have weaknesses, we all have blind spots, we all have things that we could do or should do better, but we don't. So we're gonna talk about strengths and weaknesses, and I'm gonna take you through why it's important to do that and have that knowledge. So let's start with strengths. Now I've put them in two categories. On the one hand, strengths which are much more aligned with your leadership, your management, those particular, if you like, technical skills that you need within leadership. So you need to define them or list them out as you, as you prefer. If you define them, what's great is that you end up talking, so you break this down into something more detailed, more specific, so it's not just a top line. You really get granular about what it is. So I've given you, I've shared some of my own strengths and weaknesses. There are many more, of course, but I think you should just focus on a few. If you have too many, like anything, it becomes less efficient, less effective, and you get lost. Now, I should say at the beginning as well, if you're not sure what your strengths and weaknesses are, it's always great to ask somebody close to you, somebody who knows you really well, somebody who's in your business already, but who you trust, because you don't want them to just give you the story because you're the boss, the CEO, the managing director, whatever. So that may be a way to do it, but if you can't see it for yourself, get others to help you. Strategic thinking, that's something which I'm very good at. I can take something that's quite complex and translate it into something where it gives me a roadmap, it gives the team a roadmap. So strategic thinking, I won't give a lot of detail on all of these because otherwise it will take too much time. But strategic thinking is something that is one of my strengths. Creating a business plan. Now inevitably when you run your own business or you run your own team, your own department, or well, you're a startup, you're thinking, I want to create this. You need to understand what are the building blocks, the elements that go into making a business plan so that you can execute that later. So you need to know how to create a business plan, not something everybody knows how to do or wants to do or is skilled at doing. Then building teams. I've spent a lot of time building teams, finding who are the right pieces, who are the right elements, who are the right components that are going to make this team, this department, this company, what I want it to be going forward. So building teams, identifying who the individuals are that you want to have in those areas. The other one is understanding numbers. I guess from my civil engineering background, working on construction sites, reading plans, dimensions, and all those kind of things, I understand and can read numbers. And I'm pretty good at maths although obviously computers help now, but understanding numbers, and I'm not talking about financial, that's a totally different thing, but understanding numbers and how they work. Now, the other ones which you might have heard of sometimes called your softer skills, which I don't think they're soft anymore because they're so important 
to who we are as leaders and human beings. And here are my strengths, if you like. I have an empathetic, empathetic capability. I'm empathetic towards others. So I can understand, I can show empathy, I can show understanding, I can show care in different areas. So having an ability to be empathetic is very important. And I see that as a strength of mine. I'm very good at listening as well. And I've learned over the years, not only basic listening, if you like, because there are different levels of listening, but I can get to a listening level, which is very, very deep, which allows me to connect with other people in terms of not just what they're saying, but what they haven't said, because that is so important. What hasn't been said, that's the key to everything. I'm good at coaching. I, I run coaching classes. I help individuals. I don't run many. They're very specific, but I do help coach you know that people can grow and understand and learn in their own way as well and move their own life forward as well and that is something which is very important to me is the coaching piece as is by the way the mentoring piece mentoring is incredibly important as well to help others to grow to help them to understand what they're doing right or wrong what is it that they need to do to adjust their approach to being better in the future so mentoring is another one and then i guess as a leader it's important as well and it's a soft skill, but it's also a harder, may, maybe more business skill, but it's to reprimand, to remind people if they've stepped out of the path they were supposed to take, or they've had an end of year review, which is not particularly good, or a regular review, or they've done something wrong and they need to adjust it, or they've been repeating the same thing. So reprimand means, yeah, it could be a slap on the wrist, or it could be even more than that. But when they step out, and I know they've stepped out and done something they shouldn't have done, I'm able to then bring them back on track. So reprimanding as well. Now, like I say, these are just me sharing my thoughts, ideas, and experiences, which are specific to me. I invite you to build your own. So what are the weaknesses? Well, again, I've shared my own weaknesses. They're weaknesses in the sense that, for me, it's about what I don't like doing, or I don't enjoy doing, or I don't really care to do. And we can go into the reasons why for that. But what are the things that you are not good at or you're not strong at? You may want to develop, you may want to grow, but it's not what you do right now that's good. And for me, these are some of the top four, I would say, is anything to do with financial modeling. Remember, I talked before about numbers. I'm good with numbers. I understand numbers. I understand figures. I understand dimensions. I understand certain calculations and so on. But financial modeling, which is something that a lot of businesses do to assess how the business is going to progress based on different parameters that have been input, that is not my thing. That is not something I particularly enjoy myself and I don't specifically do. In a similar vein, doing research and analysis. Now, inevitably, you could say, well, as a leader, as the boss, I wouldn't be running around doing a lot of research. But I know a lot of people who do, who run their own businesses, their own companies, and they delve into the whole research and analysis piece. Yes, you need to anal analyze, but the research and the data, again, putting data in, whether it's financial modeling or in here, it's just not my thing, not what I'm strong at and not what I enjoy doing. Analyzing data. So again, whenever you've done this research and this analysis or the financial modeling, looking at all those numbers on a, an Excel spreadsheet or a document that's given to you that is, you know, a mile deep, that's just not my thing. I have no patience, time or interest in doing it. What I do do, just so we're clear, is I can, I'm a, I can take the information and start to see whether things match up or don't match up. So I'm, I'm good at assessing all of these once it's in a format where I can see that it works. But there are those who look at stress tests and this analysis and that percentage and where this goes. Can I do it? Yes. Do I enjoy doing it? No. Would I do it going forward? No. And that's why you have a team that you build around you to help you do that. Then I guess the final one, which I've never really enjoyed, is hard selling. I believe there are different ways of selling. So if you're a commercial individual, you pick up the phone or you write emails and letters, basically selling. Hard selling for me is not something I particularly enjoy. It's not something I've really done. And whenever it's been the case, I've chosen not to do it because I use other techniques. So selling, absolutely. Hard selling, no. Selling, yes. But we all sell every single day, everything we do, whether it's selling an idea, selling a concept, 
selling our business, whatever it happens to be, there are ways to do it. And then again, going back to kind of the softer skills as it were, I thought, well, what are the weaknesses I could share with you that are problematic for me? And I'll be honest, these ones are predominantly the experiences of weakness that I had in my younger years of leadership. So today, I could almost say that I don't really have any of these that affect me in a particular way because I've grown to embrace them as part of my leadership style and my approach to leading others. But I lacked patience. I was one of those who, we need to keep going, okay? Let's get this done, let's get this moving. Even when I was a, a young leader or a young manager, I lacked patience, it wasn't my greatest skill. I would make decisions that were probably a little too quick. So maybe taking data and analysis, I made decisions, I won't go into them, but a couple of things that I did earlier on in my career, which were the wrong strategic decisions for different reasons. I had to extricate myself and the company from that. It went fine, there were no issues, but I was very quick to make a decision or decisions that needed just a bit more time of thought and reflection and planning. I was easily, easily irritated, but irritated primarily by those around me who didn't, which drove me to lack patience, didn't respond in the same way to my pace, my movement, the things I wanted to do. So that was more being irritated with other people in relation to what I wanted them to do and achieve. And then people who are time wasting. So those who waste time or who take long to come to a conclusion that would help me to make a decision. But as I said, these are all things that I had in my past. I don't have them anymore and haven't had them for a long time because I've learned that they don't help. They're actually negative. But nonetheless, wherever you are in your stage, there may be negative or weakened aspects that you have in your leadership and you need to find ways to resolve them. So you may say, well, why does all this matter? Well, it's very simple. There are many more points that I could make on here, but these are the core ones that I wanted to share with you. So why does it matter to define your strengths and weaknesses? And more importantly, what should you do once you've defined those? Well, the first thing is it creates, if you dither between things that you don't enjoy doing, but you do it anyway, versus things that you should be doing, but you don't devote the time to, then what's happening there is you're wasting valuable time. And time is an invaluable commodity. Once the clock is ticking, you will never, never gather those seconds or minutes or hours or days back. So it helps you to be more efficient as well. So you've got this time, you use it from the strengths, the things that you're most able to drive forward. You become more efficient as well because you're only focusing on the things that matter most to you. You provide clarity to yourself and to your team so you know that they shouldn't bring you anything that's gonna waste your time or provide weaknesses for you. You can make decisions around that. So those things that are your strengths, you know that instantly you understand what needs to be done. And that's how you can make quicker decisions. And then finally, it goes without saying, it allows you to lead others. And leading others is what this is all about. It's about your ability to take those strengths, build on them and enable you to lead other people to become successful in what they do. So whatever you're doing, look at your strengths and your weaknesses, list them out. If you're not sure, ask somebody who's close to you or works with you that you trust, even your PA. I've often found using my PA to say, okay, what should I be doing? What are my strengths here? He or she would be more than happy to tell you, providing you give them the opportunity to explain it and don't critique them for it. So set up your strengths and weaknesses, focus on your strengths, diminish or let the weaknesses aside so that you become better and a stronger leader in whatever you choose to do. I hope this has resonated, provided you with some insights and thoughts and ideas. Please feel free to share, like and comment and of course, subscribe to the channel so you know when other videos are becoming available. So in the meantime, thank you very much and I will see you very soon. Thank you.